All right, so what I'm doing here is I got the router table set up and I'm actually taking the back side. These are the PVC boards that are gonna go on the window and I'm ripping, I'm, I'm routing a um, rabbit in the back of them. Um, I'm starting, I've got to work my way down. So I went, I set my width out here to two inches and that's because that uh, nailing fin around the window kind of sticks up a little bit. And this gap, although the gap in the in the window, the the, the nailing fin, the flange, um, the J channel as you might call it, is three quarters of an inch wide. This fits kind of tight. So what I'm doing is I'm ripping down, or I'm routing out maybe like this is probably not quite a quarter of an inch off, and I'm going to carry this all the way across here. So it's going to go all the way across there. And this will sit flat against the sheathing and that will sit, the window flange will sit up under here. And there'll be a little bit of gap over here on the side um, between on the inside, but that just allows me to move it a little bit. And then I'm doing the same in the middle of the window. I'm adding a piece um, in between the two windows. And as you can see, I've done my second pass on this and made it wider. And now I'm working on the rest of these, making my second pass here on the router table to basically route out a groove. And ultimately what this piece will look like is it'll be cut all the way across to the edge here and this will stay and this will stick in the middle. I also made this piece five, just over five and a quarter inches wide. And what that'll allow me to do is slide it in one side and then sort of scoot it back over and center it in between that opening uh, because I can't pound it down from above uh, because there's pieces of siding in the way. So this will allow me to kind of slip it into place, slide it in there, and then shoot a couple nails in it and hold it in place. So that's the plan with that. There will also be a little bit of an air gap behind it for water to move behind. And this is cellular PVC, so this is not going to rot. Right, so all. finally just finished, well, not totally finished, but put the last little piece of siding in right up there, button up, buttoning up the exterior. So the way I did the exterior was I trimmed around the outside with some... Uh, cellular PVC uh, molding, kind of similar to Azac or Veranda board. Um, and uh, I tucked it in between the uh, integrated J-channel here, right in there. I tucked it up underneath that. Um, I also did take run it through my router and trim it down a little bit, just because it fits, but you kind of have to pound it in there with the, the factory three-quarter inch thickness. So... It, I trimmed off about, I don't know, about an eighth of an inch or so of the width, um, about two inches wide uh, across the whole thing just to allow it to fit up underneath that molding better. I learned that the hard way when I did this window because I had to pound it in there pretty good. This one is one I added when we finished our basement and I did it the same way. You can see the exact trim around the outside and then I just painted it the siding color. I mean, it doesn't match what we have here, but I would have had to take all the siding off and bring it back to here and stitch it back in. And that's 20 feet off the ground and not fun to do. <laughs> you can see my little gutter. I've got to order some different pieces. They don't stock the right size pieces. So I'm going to order some different pieces to fix that downspout there. But anyways, and there's the screen porch from the side angle there. Um, but yeah, I did Azek and then, uh, we put, I put a drip edge across the top. That's, uh, taped to the sheathing and tucked in behind the house wrap. Um, so everything's layered and lapped properly. Unfortunately, this little trim piece here on the bottom fell down and broke into like four different pieces. So I had to put it back up there in pieces and caulk it. It doesn't look the best right now. I think once I paint it, you won't really be able to tell. And it's 20 feet off the ground, so you definitely won't be able to tell. Plus, nobody really ever goes on this side of the house. So, um, but yeah, all the, uh, the trim, I just put all the pieces of siding back up, cut them. Uh, this was the last one I had to do was the very top piece across here. Uh, it stopped with the joint right there and then over here. And then basically what I did is I ripped it into like a, I cut out the middle and then I, and then I ripped it, or I cut it right in the middle, put a seam in the middle. So that way I could slide it up under the other piece and slide it in place this way sideways and then do the same here where I could lift up the other piece of siding, tuck it up underneath and slide it across. And then they would just meet in the middle. I got to get up there now and caulk everything and then put a coat of paint on it and it'll be painted the siding color so it should blend in pretty well. And that's how we did the exterior. All right, folks, I just put the last coat of paint. It's still a little wet, as you can see. I just did the bottom half, but uh, 
two coats of paint on all the trim there and the caulk and everything. I caulked it yesterday, uh, exterior caulk here, uh, because it is cellular PVC and cellular PVC moves a lot, expands and contracts quite a bit. I used some OSI Quad Max uh, caulk, which is super thick and super sticky, but it does have a lot of elasticity to it, which allows it to move quite a bit. So <clears throat> I chose to go with that, but that's it. We're done um, with the window on the exterior and interior wise, I just need to caulk and paint on the inside, uh, but the outside is done. So that's what it looks like. So I'm working on the trim now and um, I'm, done, I'm doing a profile that I've done in the rest of my house. And I'll give you an up close detail. So basically the way it is, is your legs on your side are one by four, three quarter inch. And then your top cap here called your freeze board is uh, just a piece of five quarter inch stock. And it is cut three quarters of an inch longer, which leaves you a three eighths of an inch reveal on each side of each leg there. And then I do a quarter of an inch um, reveal here, which is pretty standard. But I do a 3 8 inch reveal here, and then I cut another, I rip a piece of 5 quarter on its side, meaning that that's an inch and an eighth thick there. And then I rip that 3 quarters of an inch longer to give me a 3 8 inch reveal on either side. And it also has a 3 8 inch reveal here. Um, so I cap that off that way. And then down at the bottom, um, unfortunately these windows already had a... Uh, casing, a wood casing on them, so I had to basically, I attempted to use uh, some pocket hole screws, but the angles didn't work because of this five quarter board and whatnot. So what I ended up doing is countersinking a hole and I put some screws in here to suck this in tight and then I glued that joint. Um, I've got a little bit of glue in there and then what I'll do is I'll putty that hole with some putty. It will eventually crack, um, but it is what it is. I'm gonna, I'll sand it down and make it look as best as I can. It's not my preferred method, but these already had the casing on them and I wanted to tear everything apart. So I just added the five quarter piece here. So this is a five quarter, it's called a stool here. It's an inch and a half thick uh, there. And uh, the reason I did it an inch and a half thick is because that piece up there is also an inch and a half width ripped. And then this is just a one by four here on the bottom. Um, and then I'll cut these off and sand them and putty them and smooth them and you'll barely be able to tell these were here. Um, and then in the middle we put a, uh, I ripped a piece down, it ended up being six and a half inches wide. I put that down the middle. And then now I'm working on this window where I will make a full width five quarter stool piece there. And um, I'm working on that right now. So I'll show you the video on how I do that. All right, so the next step in this process is I have to make this five quarter inch stool. Um, so what we're gonna do, so the first thing I'm gonna do is get this measurements from the inside edge to the inside edge. So that is 75 and a half. It's about a 30 second less than that, but not a huge deal. So 75 and a half, and then I know that I have a, I'm gonna leave a quarter inch reveal on either side. So, we're gonna add a half of an inch to that measurement. So that would be 75, I'm sorry, 76. And then I'm gonna have a three and a half inch wide leg on either side. So that would be um, seven inches. So you're three and a half, three and a half. So I had seven, seven inches to that. So that was uh, 76 plus seven, which would be uh, 83. And then I have a, uh, we're gonna have a 3 8 inch reveal on each side, which is three quarters of an inch. So it'll be 83 and three quarters. All right, so I ripped my new piece here. Screwed up on the first one. Measure three times, cut eight times. That's how it goes, right? All right, so we need to center this up in this opening. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark this and we're gonna find the center. So to measure in from each side until I get the right measurement. So that's four and a half there. It's four, so we gotta go back this way. Four and a quarter right there. Four and a 
four and a quarter there. Just inside four and a quarter here. Just inside four and a quarter there. All right, so we're perfectly centered now. So I'm going ahead and marking where I'm going to make my cuts here. And then this is going to take a little effort because we're going to have to sort of sneak on, sneak into these cuts. Because this is drywall here in this window and it's not perfect. And so I'm making my marks here on where I'm going to cut. Alright, so now I know that this is two uh, let's see here it's like a sixteenth over two and three quarters yep a sixteenth over two and three quarters so here I'm gonna come in and make a mark a sixteenth of an inch over two and three quarters right here There, doing the middle two just because. Okay, sixteenth so over two and three quarters. Okay, cool. That's two and three quarters, right? Yeah, that's great. Okay, and then this measurement here is the same, maybe slightly larger. Double check it over here. All right, so that's actually the same. So 16th over 2 and 3 quarters. So I can use my combination square to mark that, which I don't think I have it up here. So I'll measure in. 16th over 2 and 3 quarters right there. 16th over 2 and 3 quarters right there. Okay. All right. Get my speed square over here. And make some marks. Line these up. One. Oh, yeah, this is right. It's like doubting myself for a second there the way I was doing it, but that's right. You always want to doubt yourself when you're building stuff because you might make mistakes, and sometimes your brain's trying to tell you something. But in this case, I'm good because these are the full things, and we're just notching out to fit around this, and we're notching out to fit here. So I'm going to probably go notch this 